Dear friends, we gather this morning on the traditional territory of the Algonquin Nation, and we recognize the continuing presence of First Nations, Métis, and Inuit in this region. May we dwell on this land with respect and peace. Here, let heaven and earth embrace. Here, may God's people find home. Welcome, everyone. What a pleasure it is today to be gathering around the font and around the Lord's table. In a few moments, we are going to baptize little Myla and welcome her as a brand new member of the body of Christ. Welcome to Myla, uh, to her parents, grandparents, and, and her aunt. Is that correct, Thelma? We hear her aunt. So welcome to uh, all of you. Uh, what a great joy uh, it is to be baptizing uh, a new member uh, of the body of Christ this morning. Those of you at home, uh, we are glad that you are praying alongside with us today. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Jesus said, 
the blindness The death fear. We light the candles of peace and hope and joy to light our way as we journey. Let us pray. God, for whom we watch and wait, you sent John the Baptist to prepare the way of your Son. Give us courage to speak the truth, to hunger for justice, and to suffer for the cause of right. With Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Congregation may be seated, but Milo's family, please remain standing. The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is nurtured in the faith and life of the Christian community? Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to obey him as your Lord? Would everyone please stand? And this question is for everyone this morning. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support Myla in her life in Christ? We will. Remain standing for our prayers. In joyful expectation, let us pray to our Savior and Redeemer. Let us pray first for all who are facing trials and difficulties, and for those who are sick, remembering especially Cecile, Lorne, Maura, Carrie, and Adrienne. The Lord deliver them and keep them in his love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Let us now pray for Myla, who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver her, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Open her heart to your grace and truth. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Fill her with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Teach her to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Send her into the world in witness to your love. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Bring her to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, Almighty God and Creator, for by the gift of water you nourish and sustain all living things. Blessed be God forever. We give you thanks that through the waters of the Red Sea, you led your people out of slavery to freedom in the promised land. Blessed be God forever. We give you thanks for sending your Son, mm -hmm. Jesus. For us, he was baptized by John in the River Jordan. For us, he was anointed as Christ by your Holy Spirit. For us, he suffered the baptism of his own death and resurrection, setting us free from the bondage of sin and death, and opening to us the joy and freedom of everlasting life. Blessed be God forever. We give you thanks for your Holy Spirit, who teaches us and leads us into all truth, filling us with his gifts so that we might proclaim the gospel to all nations and serve you as a royal priesthood. Blessed be God forever. We give you thanks for you have called my life to new life through the waters of baptism. Now sanctify this water, that your servants who are washed in it may be made one with Christ in his death and resurrection, to be cleansed and delivered from all sin. Anoint them with your Holy Spirit, and bring them to new birth in the family of your church, that they may become inheritors of your glorious kingdom. We give you praise and honor and worship through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Blessed are you, our strength and song, and our salvation. Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe, I believe in God the Holy Spirit, the Holy, Holy Catholic Church, the, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the of God, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, I will with God's help. help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, I will with God's help. God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, I will with God's, God's help. help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people? and respect the dignity of every human being. I will, with God's help. Will you strive to safeguard the integrity of God's creation and respect, sustain, and renew the life of the earth? I will, with God's help. Amen. Amen. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Myla, I sign you with the sign of the cross and I mark you as Christ's own forever. Amen. Loving God, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit 
You have bestowed upon this your servant the forgiveness of sin and have raised her to the new life of grace. Sustain her, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give her an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith in Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us of his eternal creatures. Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah said, Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. the third Sunday of Advent, the Sunday of joy. And what better way to celebrate than with the baptism of Mila? In baptism, Mila has been brought into a new life in Christ. To be baptized as a Christian means we arise out of the dark waters of Christ's death into the dawn of risen life. And by so doing, we bring in a new humanity. Baptism is truly a testimony that light shines in the darkness. It's a testimony to peace, to hope, and to joy. It's a testimony to Advent. This morning, we are all told, together, we all told the darkness. We begged to, to differ. Today, we are witnesses to God's light in the world. Today, we follow the path of John from our Gospel reading. So let's explore what John the Evangelist tells us about himself. The reading begins today with, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The description of John and John's Gospel is very different from that of the Synoptic Gospels of Mark, Matthew, and Luke, where we know him as John the Baptist, John the Baptizer, John the son of Zechariah. 
It's significant that in John's gospel, he's not described in terms of his self or his lineage. He is simply John. John sent from God. What's more, when the authorities come to question John, he describes himself by what he is not. He is not the Messiah. He is not Elijah. He is not the prophet. John is making it very clear that he is a witness to one far greater, of whom he is unworthy to even untie the thong of his sandal. John himself is not what is significant in the gospel. Christ is. And not just Christ, but the birth of a new humanity through Christ. In the prologue to John's gospel, there are echoes of the Genesis story. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep and a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. John is witness to Christ's part in this story, to his presence at creation. In John's gospel, we're told, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. In other words, it tells of the renewal, redemption, and birth of a new humanity in Christ made human. The gospel plays with contrasts. It plays with light and darkness the world made by God, and the world that rejects God. Christ who is there at creation, and Christ who comes among us in the now. The kingdom that is here, and the kingdom that is not fully yet. It tells the story of Jesus as human, and Jesus as Christ the divine. And John is there throughout the gospel, to be a witness to Jesus. Some argue that the entire gospel can be likened to a long court trial where John is Jesus' chief witness. John is the voice crying out in the wilderness that Isaiah prophesied would come to us in our time of darkness. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. It may seem odd, that one has to testify to the light. The light is surely something that we can all see. But we do know otherwise. And John testifies to those who live in darkness because they either refuse to see the light amongst them or they're hostile to it. During these dark days when people are trying to make heads or tails of the global pandemic, where people are suffering and the pain cannot be explained, where as a church, we're experiencing conditions that can be likened to the Babylonian exile, where we cannot unite as we had before, we cannot sing together, or where some of us are suffering from mental darkness, loneliness, or economic hardship, John gives us a voice. He reminds us to look outward and to define ourselves not in terms of ourselves, but in terms of who we point to who we are witnesses to, to the light that is Christ. The theologian Gary W. Charles put it beautifully. John came to bear witness to the coming of the light of God, reminding all who would listen that the darkest forces in the world are not finally as powerful as they appear. He came to bear witness that the most enchanting words spoken by forces of darkness lose their charm when measured against the word who became flesh and lived among us. Advent is one of two major times in the liturgical year where we're called to reflect. The other is Lent. John provides us something to reflect upon. As the baptized, as children of the light, 
We had made the promise Myla's parents and godparents and her family made this morning that we will continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of the bread and in the prayers, that we will persevere in resisting evil and whenever we fall, turn back to Christ, that we will proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ and seek God in all we meet, and love our neighbors as ourselves, and that we will strive for justice and peace among people, respecting the dignity of every human, and that we will safeguard the integrity of God's creation to respect, sustain, and renew the life on earth. Advent is a time to ask ourselves, how is it that we are amplifying Christ's light in the world? Do we consciously or subconsciously fall victim to forces of darkness? And how do we turn back? And how do we shine light in a world that sometimes seems so harsh? It also reminds us that we do this together as the body of Christ, supporting one another. Today, Myla's parents, George and Miranda, and godparents showed us what it means to be witnesses to the light in Myla's baptism. And so did we all when we affirmed our faith. Amen. Please stand. Remaining in your place, please greet those around you with the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
our strength, we are nothing without you. Receive all we offer you this day, as you sustain us with your mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Give our thanks and praise. Worship and praise belong to you, God our Creator, in every place and at all times. You made us, all the peoples of the world, and everything that is. You give us the daylight. Your word lights up our minds. Jesus was born among us to be light in our darkness. Your spirit lives in us so that we can look at the world with your eyes. One day we will be with you in heaven, but already we laugh with the saints and the angels and sing their joyful song, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, God, God of power and might, might, heaven and, and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Loving God, you never forget us or turn away from us, even when we fail you. You sent your son Jesus, who gave his life for us. He healed those who were sick, cared for those who were poor, and cried with those who were sad. He forgave sinners and taught us to forgive. For all your love, we give you thanks in the way that Jesus showed us. On the night before he died, while he was having supper with his friends, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, it is broken for you. After supper, he took the cup. He offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all, that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. So, so as we do what Jesus has told us, we, we open our hearts to him. We remember how he died, and rose again to live now in us. Together, Together with him, we offer you these gifts, and then we give you our shepherd. Send your Holy Spirit on us and on this bread and this wine, that they may be the body and the blood of Christ, and that, sharing your life, we may travel in your company to our journey's end. With all your people, we give you thanks and praise through the Son and in the Spirit, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from the evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The living bread is broken for the life of the world. Lord, unite us in this time. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite you to remain in your pew, and I will bring communion to share with you, beginning on this side and coming back to share communion with you on this side.
Let us pray. Faithful God, we thank you for feeding us with this heavenly banquet. Help us always to hear the prophet's call to turn our hearts to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Loving God, we have broken the bread of Jesus Christ's body. We, we have tasted, tasted the wine of his new life. We thank you for these gifts by which, by which we are made one in him and drawn, drawn into, into that new creation which is your, your will for all humankind. Through, through him who died for us and rose again, again your, your Son, our, our Savior, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> this afternoon at 4.30 is our December sing-along Advent and Christmas music, which has been lovingly prepared by Gordon and members of the choir and friends. Uh, at 4.30 this afternoon, the Zoom connection is in the, uh, this week at St. John's and on the website. Please try to join us. Gordon, we're looking forward to a fabulous and fun afternoon. Well, it's going to be a screen. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a screen. There you go. Uh, do come along. 4.30 this afternoon. Now, one of the things that many of us miss very much is socializing after church and having a coffee hour and a chance to connect with one another, uh, usually over a treat, a biscuit or something. I'm not sure what, how, do you usually have a biscuit or something here at St. John's? I know that, that <laughs> that's the case in many places. Well, this morning, um, we cannot gather for coffee, uh, but uh, Miranda and George's family, in fact, I think it's thanks to Thelma, is that true? Uh, there are goodies to be shared with all members of the congregation. Uh, and I think you brought them in a box, at, at, at the, so they're at the front. You, you may be, Thelma? Thank you very much. So, <laughs> So in celebration of Milo's baptism, uh, enjoy the treat. You can pick one up uh, on your way out. They're all individually wrapped, so please take it and enjoy it uh, on behalf of the, uh, the family. Thank you so much. Um, other announcements uh, to be shared. Uh, Prayers, prayers for you, Sheena, and your family. Oh, there's not a lot of news. There's some news, B. five minutes before we begin our worship to just try and keep silence and again I know it's very hard especially when we're not able to socialize um, but uh, the, the noise level in here was getting increasingly uh, like a coffee shop so from five minutes before just we'll try uh, to keep silence together to prepare uh, for our common act uh, of worship please stand May the grace of Christ, the love of God, and the joy of the Spirit surround and bless you as you walk in the hope of the Lord. Amen. Christ's light in the world. 
Thanks be to God.